Hey everyone, this is Vince with Green Joe Coffee Truck and today I am going to be working on my generator. Uh, I just bought a new generator. Well, it's a refurbished generator, so it's kind of new. I did some a little bit of unboxing already. I want to kind of pull it out and just show you what I would do with a new generator and kind of give some tips along the way on how to work a generator for a coffee truck. Okay, so here I am with my Champion Digital Hybrid Open Frame Inverter. So this is a 5,000 running watt, 6,250 starting watts. Let's just turn this around so you can see the front. As you can see right here, now the main reason that I picked up this generator is for the 240 volts. So this is uh, your 240 volt circuit, 240 or 220. You can see it just has a locking generator plug on there. That's a 30 amp locking generator uh, outlet. And then over here I have some GFCI outlets, which is good um, because that allows me to be able to work around water um, safely and since I'm in the beverage industry I like that and then here you have some looks like an IntelliGauge some kind of gauge 12 volt there's a reset a reset so if your circuit breaker switches and then here's like a little dummy panel it says okay caution and low oil is what I'm seeing so you got an eco-friendly so you can turn it on to you know uh, conserve your energy and uh, an on off switch and so this one right here looks kind of like your choke so that's what your choke's going to be and that's about it okay here i'm back so here's the this is the dipstick and uh for the oil and a little spout that comes off the engine right here and then this is a, a drain for the oil so it's the lowest part of the oil I guess theoretically you could fill it through there. Since I do have this tube in this funnel, I'm just going to go ahead and pour my oil through the tube in the funnel. So all I'm doing right here is making myself a little makeshift funnel. And then I'm going to pop this off. I'm going to keep this pretty close to me. I don't want to get that dirty. Okay, so that's it for the oil. Okay, so here I got a screen, that's awesome. Okay, so here we have oil in the generator now and also some gas in the generator. Uh, from here what we're going to do is I'm just going to pop on the fuel and make sure my fuel line is open, pull out my choke and give her a start. Let's see what happens, huh? Hey guys, it's Vince with Green Joe Coffee and uh, I'm here again with my generator today. Uh, yesterday I was making a video and the battery on the camera died. After some technical difficulties, I'm back again making another video here on uh, the generator. 
few things I did want to discuss. Uh, why I had picked this generator. So this is a Champion uh, uh, open frame inverter. And it's 5,000 running watts, 6250 for the uh, starting watts. And it's a pull start. And I was doing a lot of comparison against the Westinghouse, because Westinghouse has one that's pretty comparable to this. The positive aspect to the Westinghouse was that the Westinghouse was a remote start, and this one is a pull start, and so that was a negative towards this one. But there's about 50 pounds difference in weight. This one's a little bit quieter, and so it came down to whether or not you know, I should get a quieter generator um, that's a pull start that's lighter weight or if I should get a heavier generator remote start um, that's that's a heavier weight uh, so I ended up going with with lighter weight because when I took a pull uh, against future coffee truckers what I found was a lot of the pull were women and the gals were having a hard time moving big generators. And I could understand, because some of these things will get above 200 pounds. So that was one aspect of it. And then the other thing was just how loud it was. So I wanted to get a generator that started off on the quieter side. It's not gonna be as quiet as the Hondas, um, but at least started off on the quieter side. And then maybe we can come up with some type of sound board or sound block in order to dampen the amount of sound coming into your service window. All that being said, th it wasn't actually me that ended up picking this generator, it was the gals. Um, I think about 20 gals ended up um, jumping into that pole. Out of the 20, maybe three had elected for the Westinghouse, the heavier generator that was louder, but pretty much every other one wanted the lightweight, quiet generator. Now the caveat is that it was pull start, and so one of the things with pull start is you can run yourself into trouble on cold mornings or if you forget to turn off your fuel cutoff valve. And basically what happens with the, the fuel cutoff valve is when you're done with the generator for the day, what you don't want to do is just hit the, the turn off switch and turn it off. What you actually want to do is you want to cut off the fuel, the fuel line, and allow it to run dry. Um, and the reason why is because if you're traveling with a generator and your fuel line is open, you're going to end up flooding your generator full of fuel. And then you won't be able to start the generator because, you know, the next day or whatever, because there's just too much liquid in the wrong spots okay so basically what happens if you end up doing that is you'll be pulling on that thing all day long it'll take you probably it'll probably take you about an hour maybe two hours of pulling on the on the cord here before you finally dry it out enough to where you can get a spark and start on start that engine it's just it's miserable I've done it multiple times before I forget to turn off that fuel line or I've borrowed a generator and when they brought it to me, uh, they forgot to, to hit the, the fuel line or I've rented a generator, whatever. So I've been through that issue multiple times and that's probably the biggest thing that I would say will cause you the greatest headache is forgetting to cut off the fuel line. Um, other than that, um, then it all comes down to how you do your choke. So chokes are used for cold mornings or a cold start. So the engine has to be cold for the, for the choke. Once that engine's warmed up or if it's on a warm morning, you don't need the choke. I mean, you might need to choke it like a little bit. You know, you, you kind of get a feel for the generator after a while. But, you know, chokes are really made, they're really designed for uh, cold mornings, okay? What they do is they just choke the air, it enriches the fuel, and you get, you get, you get the, uh, the spark happens a little bit faster. Really, you wanna just use the choke for a cold morning and or a cold engine. Because once the engine warms up, you don't need to choke anymore, okay? Um, so that's what the choke is. The choke's located right here. You pull it out and it, and it 
chokes the air, okay? You push it in and it doesn't. So this right here is your fuel line, and as you can see, I have it cut off. And that's how I stop my engine. So I cut it off, and then I just allow it to run dry, and then the engine will sputter out. And when you go to start it, you just want to pop that back on. And that's it. It's pretty simple. You just got to remember to do it. Okay, so let's get this thing started, huh? So it's on. I'm going to turn the eco stuff off for right now. Pull my choke out. Get it nice and tight before I pull. So you don't want to, you see that, you see that wiggle that you don't want to yank on that because then you're going to end up popping your, your line, your cord after a long time. So you want to pull the tension tight first and then you want to pull and try to get your legs into it. So that's the choke. So I could push it in and it'll run a little bit more. Now I'm going to push it all the way in. And you want to let it run for a little while, maybe five minutes before you plug anything in. So this is a sound meter. It's showing about 69 decibels, 68 decibels from roughly about six feet away. And I think that's, that's pretty accurate. So normally the generator lives, for me, on the other side of the coffee truck. And so I've set up a few different materials I want to experiment with and see about what the different decibel ratings for, for using different sound blocks would be. So we'll just kind of have a little fun with this. I got some foam boards, uh, I got some plywood, and I'm going to grab some household towels and see how that looks. It looks like just on my YouTube slash Google study. That's kind of what people have been using. I've tried soundboard in the past, and although it's not that bad, it works pretty decently, it's heavy. And so again, I'm trying to avoid heavyweight material. So we're gonna try to experiment and see how this turns out. First person in line is about 60, 62, 61, so. Okay, in the truck. Fifty nine sixty. Fifty eight, fifty nine. 
getting fired. Hey, so my name is Vince and uh, my company is Green Joe Coffee Truck. Basically what I do is help people build coffee trucks and espresso carts and trailers and vans and all that good stuff. So um, if you're just getting started researching this, you should probably take a look at the blog. Um, that's greenjoecoffeetruck.com forward slash blog. Um, you'll find on the website I sell the ebook and a business plan. Um, we have some espresso machines for sale now. Uh, the coffee truck, this one up there, is the details on it, um, it's going up for sale soon. Um, and then we have our coffee truck course. And the next one is in September. Uh, starts on the 10th of 2020, uh, just in case you're seeing this in the future. And uh, that course covers the basics on how to get into coffee trucking. Um, you can find a video with details on that on the website. So. Uh, that's under forward slash courses so you'll see that there anyhow um, hope you enjoy this video and thanks for tuning in